You knew it was going to happen as soon as word broke that Brian Burns was a New York Giant. You knew the realistic rebuild would be on the way. Saquon Barkley, out. Jersey in the background, out. Still got the canvas up. I still like him. It's just, you know, going to the Eagles is tough. So with these off-season rebuilds, the way I'm going to work is I'm going to make sure that they have all their signings. And then it, you just, with loading in in the offseason, you can't regulate every single player to go to the right spot and still keep the draft order and do all these things that you need to do. But what you can do is load in and then make some of those moves yourself. For example, you know, make Brian Burns a punter, trade him over, still have the pick compensation, and bang. Brian Burns is a giant. If you guys have been on the channel for a while, you know I am a massive Brian Burns fan. He was arguably my favorite player in his 2019 draft class. I advocated for the Giants to take him at number six overall. I obviously had no say in the matter, and they took Daniel Jones. And then Joe Shane, new GM of the Giants, chose to extend Daniel Jones to a four-year contract worth $40 million per year. Really only works out to being a two- or three-year contract with outs in the contract in terms of dead money really only about two years still have to take dead money to get rid of them after 2024 but it's not you know make or break you free up a lot of money by doing it and then especially in uh after the 2025 season as well but brian burns absolutely worth it i said this in my free agency breakdown video but if you can get brian burns and devin singletary for like 35 36 million dollars it's way more beneficial then Xavier McKinney, who's a safety, and Saquon Barkley at running back for $29 million a year. I just think that Brian Burns is a way more impactful player coming off the edge. And in today's modern defenses that you see with the two high shells, you don't necessarily need a dynamic safety the way you saw with, you know, the Earl Thomas Seahawks, for example, with the single high stuff. So it's, it's you know, safety is less impactful in most defenses Packers obviously think he's worth $17 million per year. They go out and pay him. Best of luck to McKinney. Obviously, you know, Saquon as well. But uh, it's just, it wasn't worth it for the Giants with much bigger needs. They need to focus on more impactful positions. And the way they're building out their team, you can see just from the highest rated players on the team, defensive tackle, left tackle, edge. Those are the three most impactful positions outside of quarterback probably in the NFL. Corner and receiver up there as well, but those three are paramount, paramount to any team success. The Giants definitely suck, but this move makes them better. Saquon Barkley here in free agency wants to be a Giant for life, but the Eagles just offered too much money. So we do have to bring in Devin Singletary. We do have to bring in Drew Locke, who signed today for one year, $5 million. I'll make sure the money's fine with that. And I'll even orchestrate a trade if I have to. Devin Singletary is getting three years, $16.5 million overall. So, you know, hopefully he just signs that and there's no problem. If he doesn't, I'll just pay him more and then take the contract down to exactly what it is, which I think end up being the case. So that'll be easy. Just there is setup to do at the beginning of these things. I want to make that, you know, abundantly clear. The Giants were also able to bring in Jermaine Illuminor. It's kind of a swing tackle, has guard flexibility. Two years, $14 million from the Raiders to team back up with his offensive line coach, Carmen Brasillo. So that should be a fun fit. Again, I will pay him more just to make sure he signs, and then I'll take the contract down to what it actually is. And we were able to bring in all three of those guys, Devin Singletary, Jermaine Illuminor, and Drew Luck. Again, I'll have to adjust the contracts on Illuminor and Singletary, but... Devin Singletary is a fine player. He's not really a game changer. And the Giants offensive line is obviously nothing crazy. I like the number 26 on him though. But he's a good player. He can kind of do it all a little bit. Should be a nice addition to the team. He is like fine. When you look at the team, there are a number of holes, obviously. The offensive line still needs to come a long way. I think we need to make a decision about Illuminor and Neal. Evan Neal, we might want to push inside to guard. I think that just might make, th make things a little bit easier. There's obviously talk about that happening in real life. Maybe him even playing left guard, running into could play right. We could move Jermaine Illuminor to right guard. Right now, the Giants are expected... Well, here's an expected depth chart. John Runyon Jr. at right guard, Joshua Azudu at left guard, and Jermaine Illuminor starting at right tackle. I think I would probably just prefer to move Evan Neal to guard. Mark Lewinsky, I thought, was actually a free agent, but 
We are going to make him one, freeing 5.7 million in cap room. Of course, I like to start with how it is in real life, but I'm running the team now. So I'm going to make any move that I want to at this point. Got to improve in the draft at receiver and then maybe even quarterback as well. The difficult thing with the 2024 draft class in Madden is that teams are just not taking quarterbacks from the first realistic rebuild that I did with the Dolphins. Teams just would not draft a QB. So Caleb Williams fell, Jaden Daniels fell, Drake May fell. If one falls to six and one probably will, I'm going to draft one. Now, am I going to make it probably Drake May or Jaden Daniels instead of Caleb Williams? Yeah, it just seems a little bit more realistic. However, you know, I think the Giants in real life might have to trade up for a QB or it's JJ McCarthy at six if they want to go that direction. I think sticking and picking a receiver could be better at that spot, but we'll see what happens. Drew Locke does not stop you from drafting a quarterback, and we know obviously Daniel Jones does not either. So this is what the offensive line looks like right now. Evan Neal, the reason I chose to move him back to left guard is because he might just be a little bit more comfortable setting on the left side. Of course, played left tackle at Alabama. Some right tackle, I think, as well. Maybe even some, maybe some right guard. But if he was more natural as a left tackle it might make more sense to move him to left guard where he can have everything be on the same side as opposed to being essentially flipped over on that right side. So we're going to try him at guard. I'm not sure if the Giants do that. There is a world where Evan Neal is just a serviceable right tackle next year. That's a possibility, but, you know, I'm, I'm not holding my breath, so to speak. Darren Waller could end up retiring, but this is the team. Defensively, it looks very good with the addition of Brian Burns. Like Kayvon Thibodeau is on the rise. Micah McFadden had a good season. Bobby O'Karake had a great season. We know Dexter Lawrence is a stud. How does he not have superstar X-Factor? Is it just because the Giants are bad? He's an X-Factor player. There's no question about it. There's no Giants bias there. He's one of the top three interior defensive linemen in the league. Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, Dexter Lawrence. There's no argument that those are the top three. Justin Matabike is getting into that conversation, right? Then a couple of others, but... That's the top three. Deontay Banks, you really hope ends up being an excellent player. But a lot of holes to fill. Safety, interior defensive line, corner, a lot of holes. And this time, Saquon actually goes to the Texans. Again, some people might be upset, and Josh Allen got franchise tagged in real life. I can't make all of it work. It's just, you know, obviously the most impactful team is the team that I'm doing. So, just it matters about not bringing those guys back, in my opinion. Xavier McKinney goes to the Jaguars instead of the Packers, and the Packers actually got, or the Jaguars actually got the Packers free safety in Darnell Savage. Now, I'll tell you, of the remaining available safeties, Deshaun Elliott to the Giants would be sick, but Julian Blackman, not available here. I'd love for Julian Blackman to follow Bobby O'Karake to the Giants from the Colts. That could be a really nice sneaky signing, but we're going to be a little bit more focused on the draft at this point. Uh, this is the auto-generated class that you get when you, you know, start from the last week of the season. But, of course, we're not really worried about that. So, I'm going to load in 2024 NFL Draft Bengal. You can find it on the file share, my most up-to-date one. Uh, and it, it should be pretty good. Of course, tweaks are being made all the time. And hopefully these teams actually choose to draft QB this time to make things a little bit more realistic at the top of the draft. When we have... You know, two guaranteed top five talents at QB. Round one talent as the number three overall player. But of course, in the draft, the Giants, they really only have a few options that you really need to concern yourself with. Caleb Williams, probably out of the question, but who knows, but probably out of the question, right? Break May, Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, potentially on the table. I would say at number six. And then the receivers, it's long shot Marvin Harrison Jr., more likely, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze at six. And then maybe, depending on what gets there, the Giants could consider a tackle. Joe Alt, Olu Fashinu, potentially in that conversation. But the right tackles, you have Talisa Fuaga, JC Latham. Those are probably the only two tackles in contention to go at number six. Other than that, I don't think the Giants take an edge rusher anymore. I don't think that's even in consideration at all. I know some people thought that was a possibility. Well, the Giants just got Brian Burns. So... Unlikely at this point, but eyeing weapons on offense, whether it's a QB or a wide receiver. And in this draft, I can tell you wide receivers stay on the board for a while. 
I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the strategy ends up looking like. I think the QBs are going to fall. Also, you can see at the Champ Bailey jersey in the back now. And with all the Texas Longhorns players that Broncos are signing, I might just be a Broncos fan now. I, that might have to be the direction we go. Of course, PJ Locke, Caden Stearns, but they bring in Brandon Jones, Malcolm Roach today, Lil Jordan Humphrey could be back. So many Texas Longhorns potentially draft for the Broncos. Tavondre Sweat, maybe it's Byron Murphy. Maybe it's Ryan Watts down the board. Maybe it's Jalen Ford if they want a linebacker. And then that doesn't even factor in the receivers. You trade Jerry Judy. Maybe you get Adonai Mitchell. Maybe Xavier Worthy. Maybe bring in Jatavion Sanders at tight end. Maybe it's Christian Jones for depth at tackle down the board. Maybe it's Jordan Whittington at the end of the draft to get a good, you know, blocking receiver in there. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for the draft for that reason. I want to see where my Longhorns go. But we'll take a look at this final mock draft, and we won't. Where are the mock drafts? They're not here. They Please take a quarterback over Justin Fields, Bears. Please. Okay, NFL draft time. I can't control how insane this is going to be, but just know the draft board has the three QBs at the top. And then the receivers, of course. Last time when we did the Dolphins, spoiler alert, the Bears took... Darnell, not Darnell Mooney, New Atlanta Falcon. Money with two O's, love it. They took Malik Neighbors at number one. Don't do that again, please. They go with Marvin Harrison Jr. All right, well, there you go. Commanders take Joe Alt at number two. The Patriots take Caleb Williams. Okay, finally a QB goes top three. Caleb Williams to the Patriots. I don't think that happened last time. Cardinals go Dallas Turner. And the Chargers go Talisa Fuaga. Giants on the clock, round one, pick six. Of course, I've already traded the second round pick to the Panthers. Drake May and Jaden Daniels are here. I am turning in the card for quarterback from North Carolina, Drake May. He's got a big time arm. He's got decent mobility. Accuracy can be phenomenal at times, but inconsistencies. This is a young quarterback. These things happen, even with Caleb Williams, even with CJ Stroud. Even with any great quarterback you can think of that's that's younger, you know, these guys are not perfect. Drake May, not perfect yet, but certainly he's to playing behind a terrible offensive line at North Carolina. And he'll actually see some familiar faces. Marcus McKeithen and Joshua Azudu might have been teammates for a year. Drake May, welcome to the Giants. All the way in. Might have to change that jersey number from number 10. I think that's going to be retired. I think it already has been, obviously. But he's not Eli Manning. But he's got a bigger arm. He's got mobility, as I mentioned. He is a playmaker who is used to playing with a terrible O-line and limited weapons. That's part of why 2023 didn't go amazingly for him or UNC. UNC probably wins three games without him, I swear. They're a disaster team. Drake May, he's ready for the challenge of the New York Giants. They got to find a way to get him. Here, he falls right to us. I'm all the way in. Let's go. J.C. Latham to the Falcons. That's interesting. Bears go with Jared Verse. Go ahead and simulate to our second round pick. Only one second round pick now, of course, because of the Brian Burns trade, but that's more than enough. That's fine. It's still a pick near the top of the draft, comfortably in the top 50. Adonai Mitchell fell. I mean... They shouldn't be. They're ranked pretty high in the draft. I, I really doubt he's not a, you know, a top 40 pick. But, I mean, things happen. And in a super stacked receiver class, I mean, these things can happen. Even if it's unlikely. Uh, I'm I'm turning in the card for Adonai Mitchell. Wide receiver from Texas. Hook him horns. Now the Giants offense looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm in. Adonai Mitchell, welcome to the, to the, I almost said Texas Longhorns. Welcome to the New York Giants. Came in at 6'4", 205 at the Combine, even though his playing weight was closer to that 196 number, and ran 4'3", 5". Exceptional route runner for his size. He's actually only about 6'2". Gonna have to change that with the official Combine measurements coming out, but what a monster addition to this offense. Break May and Adonai Mitchell... We're going to have some fun here in this rebuild. Does A.D. Mitchell get this deep into the second round? I doubt it, right? But you never know. And of course, you know, in these uh, 
bad in draft classes. They prioritize different players and positions regardless of what the actual draft board says. And here we are. Round three, pick six. Seems like a very realistic possibility. Tyler Newbin, Christian Mahogany on the board. The Giants really could use either of those players. Some great running backs still on the board. Zach Sinner. I think I'm going to take Christian Mahogany. He's actually a New Jersey kid. Ended up committing to Boston College, of course. Big, powerful offensive guard. Christian Mahogany, welcome to the Giants. 6'3", 322. He drew some Osiris Torrance comps. You guys remember him coming out of Louisiana Lafayette to Florida and then, of course, drafted by the Bills, right? So, Christian Mahogany, some good potential, good depth on the O-line, and fits the, the New Jersey storyline. I think that's kind of a fun one. So, here is Jonathan Brooks, the next pick. Hook him. So we've upgraded quarterback, receiver, and now offensive guard. Now we need to focus probably on the defensive side of the ball. Some great, great receivers still available. But Jerry and Jones is here. Renardo Green is here. I have a motto this draft. Max Melton's still here. He's supposed to be higher. Is that not an update? He's supposed to be higher. But I'll tell you. My motto this draft cycle is take a Florida State corner. Bernardo Green and Jerry and Jones, I both like and in different ways. I mean, Jones is really good. Bernardo Green's more of that press corner. He's really good. They're both good athletes. Go with Jerry and Jones from Florida State. Really like him. Ran pretty well at the combine as well. And we're going to bring in 91 speed, 91 acceleration into our secondary. I may have drafted... Jerry and Jones last time around. But I love the addition here. Safety is going to be a need. Could take a safety with our next pick. Of course, it depends on best player available. Obviously, some really solid receivers still available. Just the receivers are going to be. That's because there are so many of them. Bo Braid's a good player. Do we like any of these safeties enough? I mean, you have some decent options, nothing exceptional. I I mean, Kalen King could move back to safety. He's expected to. He's not 6'3". Why are some of these not what I've inputted? I swear these are different. I know Kalen King is very much not 6'3". Kalen King definitely cannot play corner, but we're going to draft him to play safety. He does have hidden dev. Has this changed? I know I don't have Kalen King with hidden dev. <laughs> I, I can tell you. But all right. He's going to play safety for us. He's slow as the day is long. Ran 4-6, and that shows on tape. He can't play corner, in my opinion, but he could potentially play safety. Round six, and a lot of these star receivers are still available. I can't really make them go much earlier. They're, they're supposed to go way earlier, right? Round two or three. But it's so tough. I might have to just push them up a ton. That when they fall, it's, you know, not, it's not quite as far. Could take, I mean, Malik Washington's great. All these awesome receivers are still here. With a, another a linebacker in the fold. Let's get John Tree Hunter from Georgia State. Pretty good player and a good addition. Draft recap, we did pretty well. Drake May, 78 overall hidden development. Adonai Mitchell, 76. Chris Mahogany's a 72. Darian Jones is 71. Kalen King is a 70. But obviously horrendous speed. And don't believe his coverage is all that good either. But for a potential safety down the board, not awful. Coverage in the very, very low 70s. And then wrap things up with John Tree Hunter for depth at linebacker. All in all, if this is the way the Giants draft went, this would be a home run. But... I doubt they end up really with either of these players, but that's why we're doing the rebuild because anything can happen. It is realistic in the fact that we're making realistic moves. I can't control who falls to me in the draft. I already know. Uh, realistic. Uh, Drake May, Adonai Mitchell. Not gonna get either of those. Yep, yeah, probably not, but we can only play the cards we're dealt. Also, I'm not sure if it's because I directly imported it or if they fixed this glitch somehow, but I'm noticing, for me at least, the player models are not defaulting. To the same like generic face with no build this is everything looks good 
I mean, I like to see that. It's a it's a welcome change. I don't know if it's a one-time thing or just because I'm importing it directly, but looks good. We are not going to be sitting Drake May. He's starting right away. And let's see what he looks like. Of course, those are the receivers. No Adonai Mitchell on the field, but I can guarantee you he's going to be starting for us as well. What a dime from Drake May. Oh, he's a Hall of Famer if he goes to the Giants. No question. I've seen enough. One throw in a video game. In practice, no less. He's the real deal. All right, let's see what Adonai A.D. Mitchell can do. Future All-Pro corner Deontay Banks coverage might be too good. Also, he just, I think he tore his ACL. But he's ready for the next rep. Also, this is Daniel Jones airing it down the field. Don't love that. Nice snag. Okay, this is the new look team. It isn't amazing, obviously. We know that. But hopefully we can move in the right direction. Phenomenal draft, obviously. We need to build on that. An upgrade Adonai Mitchell here. Plus two to catch in traffic is nice. Rating's already pretty good for him, of course. Also, this could mean good things for Aziz Ojolari. Brian Burns coming in. He struggled to stay healthy. He's not the biggest, best three-down player. This might give him opportunities to be more of a designated pass rusher, and that could lead to more success. He's going into a contract year. They're, you know, they're planning for life after him. Of course, 2024 is his final year under contract. So it's probably his final year as a giant, I would guess. Not necessarily, but probably. But he should be a good DPR this year, designated pass rusher. And Kayvon Thibodeau has a strong camp. We're going to upgrade plus five to play rec. That should be very nice for him. A lot of these younger players just have naturally lower awareness and play rec kind of impacting their overall. But Kayvon Thibodeau getting upgraded would be kind of nice. Move Kalen King to safety where he's a 69 overall. Got to upgrade zone. He might be starting at free safety for me this year. That's devastating, admittedly. But it's what we're going to do. And Kayvon Thibodeau on the verge of a breakout. Hopefully he's able to play very well. Two combined sacks and tackles for loss with Kayvon Thibodeau against the Panthers. Brian Burns against the Panthers too here in week one. How fun. Is that the case in real life? I don't know that it is. Draft, co uh, draft class is going to be auto-generated this time around. We tried the 2025 one last time. It's kind of fun, but it's it's got a lot of guys who aren't draft eligible, and that just kind of kills some of the realism for me. So we're just going to use a fake one, and then I actually don't know who these players are because they don't actually exist. So it's a little bit more fun to scout as well and see what the draft classes are going to look like. Corner, left tackle, wide receiver, all really positions we could consider drafting pretty high. So don't actually mind that at all. And I'll make our primary scout, not tight end and quarterback, but corner and wide receiver. Kind of a no-brainer. All right, let's see what Kayvon Thibodeau does in week one. And we go 0-1. That's not great. Not a great start. Did Kayvon Thibodeau have a good game though? He is. He, he's here to be great. All right. Kayvon Thibodeau getting a slight boost here. Does that mean a dev trade upgrade? He gets 10,000 XP. So no dev trade upgrade. That would have been really cool up to Superstar. But I'll take the 10,000 XP and maybe an opportunity to get a dev trade upgrade here if he completes another goal. Is that what we're going to see here? That would be sweet. Yeah, three combined sacks in TFLs is going to be a long shot, but not impossible. Not impossible. He got two there in week one. Please, Kayvon. Get three TFLs, sacks, any combo. And that might be superstar dev. That'd be a huge boost to this, at the start of this rebuild. That'd be phenomenal. We lose again, 21-14. We're not allowing that many points. But we're not scoring very many points. That's kind of a big issue. How'd we do? Nope. Didn't get it. That's okay. Wasn't really expecting it, but would have been nice. We'll simulate to the midseason mark, see which players we want to resign. And I am getting ready to cut Daniel Jones. Not yet, but it's coming. Also, seems like this stat, uh, this class is absolutely stacked at corner. You look at all these different regions. Central, cornerbacks are number three, number 19, number 20. Cornerbacks number three, seven, and four and 13 for Southeast. Overall, there's just a ton of great corners in this class. This might be a good year to draft a corner, is what I'm saying to you. Yeah, pretty obvious. Who's going to be a free agent? 
Could be yeah, Darius Slayton. We talked about Aziz Ojolari already. Jason Pinnock, starting strong safety. That's maybe someone we want to bring back. The rest, not super tied to. Evan Neal is going to be a tough decision on the fifth-year option. I'm going to delay on Kayvon Thibodeau and just look to extend him. He already has interest in remaining with the Giants here. I'm going to try and extend him while he's going to be somewhat cheap. Evan Neal is going to be super cheap, but that's because he's not all that good. Although, we went on a bit of a win streak here. Four and three at the midseason mark after a win over the Vikings, 31-17. And we have a breakout challenge for a receiver. It's Darius Slayton. Well... Unfortunately, it's trade deadline week because we could potentially trade. I'm not going to. Brian Burns also has a dev trade challenge. He could go up to superstar X-Factor, I believe, with three interceptions, force fumbles, tackles for loss, sacks, any combination, as long as it's three or more. Darius Slayton's a tough one. He's a good player. He's not a great player. He's 27 years old. He doesn't really want to be here. I think the writing's kind of on the wall with that. We have Adonai Mitchell now. We have Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt. Can't really see the need there. However, Aziz Ojolari, I'm going to offer an extension to. He's only 24 years old. We can give him more money. He's a really good backup to have. I definitely do want to bring him back for that price tag or even slightly above it. Jason Pinnock's back for five years, about three and a half million per year. And the rest, I'm just not super interested in at this time. I just think that uh, Pinnock is a good enough starter for right now. We obviously want to improve there, but for right now, he's going to be fine. I think our focus position... Might as well just do corner, and then for receiver, we can do that manually. I'll simulate to week 11, do the three focus players, and then we'll get off season. So, simulate this week against the commanders. Not going to be trading anybody here at the deadline. Also not going to be you know, looking to add anybody. As we lose in week 8, and it looks like... Darius Slayton didn't get three touchdowns. Shock. That was never going to happen. But what about for Brian Burns? Nope, didn't happen either. Zizo Jolari is just not super interested in being back, mainly because of the scheme fit, which we could change. But our defense is playing well. Ojolari ends up accepting that contract extension again. Not super interested in anybody else. We're just going to let those guys walk. Going to try and improve through the draft and free agency. We should be able to free up a ton of cap space when we let go of Daniel Jones. If you look at his current contract, the way it's structured, you can of course see that there is a massive penalty associated with cutting him right now. It's less in real life, but it's going to be a little bit more doable after this next season. But if you think I'm letting that cap hit get up to $58.5 million, there's just simply no way. So we are stuck with Daniel Jones for right now. But once that contract is off the books, which we're going to make sure that happens earlier than it's scheduled to, it's going to be smooth sailing. Going to have plenty of money and plenty of opportunity to really make this team a lot better. Focus players, well, we know these cornerbacks are sick. If Shaquille Hicks is a top five talent with C-man coverage and deep press, how do we feel about Jamal Mitchell with A-man coverage, A-press, A-zone, great to elite speed, agility. Play rec isn't quite so good. Shaquille Hicks is bigger. Six foot, 189. Looks to be a decent athlete. I question how he's also a top five talent. Jamal Mitchell looks like obviously the best player in the class. And even Harold McLeod looks better on paper. I'm confused at the top five rating, I'm not going to lie. Garris McKee looks better. Round one true talent. Ron McMullen looks the same. Or slightly better. He's a round one talent. I mean, the talent at corner is insane. But I really consider drafting a receiver. At first glance, Vince Kilgore looks good. Artie Lloyd looks good. Playmaker archetype usually quite good in this game. So that could make even a guy like Bobby Carney good. Six foot four Alex Simmons looks interesting. I'll just look at the three receivers for right now. It's not something I'm planning on in the first round, but probably more so down the board. I got to get in position for one of these top corners. If we can't trade up for what appears to be the best one in the draft, we'll let one fall to us. But it's not like we're forming that well right now. We're five and four. Our offense is very bad. Our defense isn't so bad, which 
you know, kind of makes sense for the Giants that the defense would be a little bit better than the offense. The offense is the worst in the league in real life for just about. So seemingly anything would be better than that. But we'll see what happens. Did not make the playoffs, finishing last in the division at 8-9. and nine. The Cowboys went 16-1. and one. And we'll see these stats. Drake May, 3,800 yards, 18 touchdowns to 18 picks. Semi-realistic stat line there, I would say. Rushing, Devin Singletary cannot get over four yards per carry. Kept getting the football, though. Too many times, probably. 329 attempts. Receiving, Darius Slayton went four yards over 1,000. Wandale not too far away. Adonai Mitchell had the bulk of the catches, but finished third in yards and third in touchdowns. Offense was just not very good. We're going to look to make changes there, obviously. Bobby O'Carra, okay, plenty of tackles. Dexter Lawrence, 18 TFLs, also led the team in, in sacks with 10.5. 7.5 for Brian Burns, only 5 for Kayvon Thibodeau. And then three picks for Kalen King actually led the team. Very bizarre numbers. Season recap has the 49ers getting Super Bowl revenge on the Chiefs. Dak Prescott wins MVP. No Giants anywhere to be found in terms of awards. That's okay. This was a building year. We should have near a top 10 pick in the draft, right? Something like that. Adonai Mitchell with an upgrade here. Does have abilities. Did he get upgraded to Superstar Dev? He won Offensive Rookie of the Year for the NFC. There you go. So Adonai Mitchell up from Star Dev to Superstar. Very good start for him. Runoff Elite is probably not what I want. Don't really have a ton of options right now. Reach for it. Sure, fine, whatever. But he's going to go up. Be playmaker. Through 81 overall for Adonai Mitchell. He is our obvious emerging wide receiver one. We're up to 72 million in available salary cap. As I mentioned, I'm not going to sign Kayvon Thibodeau this year. or Because it's, it's, I can't. It's picking up the fifth year option. We're just basically waiting for him to get better, and then we extend him for more money. I want to avoid that. Evan Neal, I think we'll wait on as well. I don't really want to pay him what the fifth-year option would give him. It just doesn't really make sense to do that. We're going to pass as well, and everyone is going to hit free agency, except for Kayvon Thibodeau and uh, Evan Neal. Those guys are not free agency eligible yet, but we will move to free agency now and see what we can do. So, the 29th ranked offense. How do we improve that? An upgrade on the O-line could be could be a good move. Drake May, of course, superstar dev. A big-time receiver upgrade could be good. Possibility in the draft. And then defensively, we need help on the D-line badly. We need help in the secondary badly. We could upgrade at safety and corner. Both defensive end spots. I do want to stick in the 3-4, but I need I need a lot better than De just Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence is amazing, but I can't just live with Raheem Nunez Rochez. And then, I mean, I can't even remember who else was there just looking at it right then. Joe Tooney's a free agent. Von Holland is a free agent. Doesn't really want to be in New Jersey. Wants to play in a warm weather state. Interesting for... A uh, Canadian kid in the Vancouver area that committed to Oregon, but I guess he was drafted by the Dolphins. Okay. Ray Greenlaw would be quite a big upgrade at inside linebacker. Certainly move him there. Wyatt Teller would be a big upgrade at guard. Jeremiah Usu koromoa is interesting. Demarcus Lawrence isn't a scheme fit for us. A lot of good free agents, though. Holland, I would love to get. Of the strong safeties, I'm not as interested. But Javon Holland's at the top of the list right now. Outside linebacker would be moving these guys inside. JOK doesn't think he's a good fit, but I mean, I'm not paying these guys like edge rushers. Greg Greenlaw's not getting $25 million per year. Let's not be ridiculous. So those guys are automatically off the table. Jerome Baker's interesting. I might just prefer to stick with Micah McFadden for the cost, though. And not really interested in any outside linebacker. Charles Amenahu is an option. Hook'em Horns, of course. The D-tackles is kind of what we're wanting to look at, though. Eric Armstead offers for these guys. Could bring BJ Hill back. And at left end, Beast out of Charlotte, Larry Ogunjobi. The options are not great. If we want someone, we're going to have to overpay. 
It might just be Michael Pierce for a year. Or DJ Hill, I guess. I don't I don't love the options. I really don't. But we need something there. And I'm not sure when I'm gonna get another defensive tackle in the draft. So BJ Hill. I could probably draft one at some point. BJ Hill is gonna look to come back, hopefully. Jaron Reed could be just a good backup plan. Take the bonus down a little bit. Those guys, of course, would be moving to defensive end. And then I think we just spend money. I mean, Wyatt Teller is interesting. Really good. The price tag is honestly not too bad for him either. Joe Tooney, also quite good. A lot more expensive, though. I think the best move is to offer Wyatt Teller. He wants to be here. He's not tremendously expensive for how good he is. And it seems just like the perfect fit. Wide receiver. Not really going to be targeting any of those guys. So, Javon Holland's going to be my big offer. I'm going to give him big time money. I mean, this is Xavier McKinney money. But maybe when we're going to be a little bit more competitive. Might even have to up that offer. A little. Make him consider. But... Of course, salary cap pretty much goes up every year, right? So, overpaying, so to speak, Javon Holland is not the worst idea. Because this should end up being worth it if we can get in early. I don't know that we're going to be able to get him. I think we do need a kicker and a punter to the player card we have. There's, there's a way to see depth chart. I thought it was in the top right. I can't remember. Where, I thought it was in the negotiations. Oh, yeah. So, it, it, okay. It, we have nothing there. So, we need a kicker and a punter. Because we let Jamie Gillen go. Tommy Townsend, of course, signed with the Texans. I'll probably look to avoid him for that reason. Although, he actually could be here because it's only a two-year deal. With, essentially, an opt-out after one if they want to. So, he could just hit free agency. That's a possibility. So, I actually am going to offer him. If he wants to be here. Which, we have our franchise QB, apparently, in Drake May. And um, look to get a kicker a little bit later. But these are our targets. Javon Holland, Wyatt Teller, Tommy Townsend, BJ Hill, and Jaron Reed. See if we can get any of those guys. Hopefully at least a couple. And Townsend and Hill still on the table. Did we get anybody? We got Wyatt Teller and Jaron Reed. That's not the worst. I, I, you know, I, I didn't think we'd get Javon Holland just because of how competitive it was. Jaron Reed could compete to start. Wyatt Teller is going to start. Find a spot for him. Probably over Evan Neal. Maybe Neal moves back to tackle. Then we'll see about Townsend and BJ Hill here. BJ Hill has signed. He'll be a starter. Tommy I mean, Townsend's still mulling over offers. And Von Holland is headed to the Texans. Of the kickers, Harrison Butker makes sense to me. Don't really want to pay him a ton. But, you know, something to play. Give him a long-term deal. Uh, Cameron Dicker in there as well. So we'll see if we can bring in some special teams help. Kind of revamping this team a little bit. Moving in the right direction, but obviously a long way to go. If we were to cut Daniel Jones right now, our cap penalty would still be $69.8 million. We're probably going to have to give it another year. Now in real life, it's just not going to be quite like that. The Giants really can cut him after 2024 and be fine. In Madden, we don't really have the same luxury. I could just change the contract. Oh, I forgot to change the contracts of Illuminor and um, Devin Singletary. That actually would free up money because they're being paid more than what they got in real life. So I can actually save a little bit of money here. And we were able to bring in Harrison Butker and Tommy Townsend just building the Chiefs special teams unit. Super Bowl champions could do a lot worse than these guys. So team is getting better. Sucks we couldn't bring in Javon Holland. That could have been really, really nice. But we move. It's okay. We'll have money for Jalen Waddle if he gets free agency next year. That'll be great. So, where does Wyatt Teller go? Well, he's going to play right guard. John Runyon to left. Evan Neal to right tackle. He backs up Illuminor probably. I could, I could get on board with that. I could get on board with my own idea. That makes sense. Receiver could still be a need. Defensively. I mean, it's, it's what we talked about. However, B.J. Hill and Darren Reed are going to look a lot better than Jordan Riley. 
Gordon, Gordon, the Ryder Anderson. BJ Hill going to move over to play. We'll stick him at right end. Dexter Lawrence I'm going to keep as the nose tackle. Just such a dominant player. Now he has moved around from year to year, but that's a pretty good spot for him right now. And of course, Reed moves over as well. Also, it looks like I see that Dexter Lawrence get upgraded to Superstar X Factor. Love to see that. He do anything? Nope, just got Superstar X Factor. Well, you know what? It was very deserved. And a defensive rally could be good for the team. Yeah, let's let's do defensive rally. Jamal Mitchell's actually past Shaquille Hicks here. Don't love that. Vince Kilgore, round one to two talent. Artie Lloyd, round one talent. So receiver could be something we look to take. What about a defensive tackle? Jaleel Ginn out of Clemson at first glance looks awesome. Obviously, athletic stuff is going to matter a lot here. For anyone at like 370 pounds, I could add in. That'd be sweet. It does happen from time to time, although not always. Hagman is a last name. Uh, last name. Do you guys remember Rashid Hagman? Played defensive tackle at Minnesota. Who drafted him? Who drafted Rashid Hagman? Second round pick, Bears? Feels like a bear. Falcons. That sounds familiar now. Weird. He played in 2014, 2015, 2016. Not at all in 17 or 18, and then in 19 with the Falcons. I definitely didn't know about. Let's see what the mock draft says. Ooh, we might be catching a break here. We have other players, more valuable positions historically, projected to go ahead of the cornerback that I want, and that is probably going to be Jamal Mitchell from Wake. He is 23 years old, but has elite speed. The decision's been made. We need to move up to number six. Shouldn't be all that difficult to do from 15. I don't know what we're going to have to move to make it happen, but we're moving up for a corner, not a quarterback. So it shouldn't be tremendously expensive. I think we're going to be able to get that done. Now, the unfortunate thing about not being so high up at the draft that we have to move up is that I like other players in this class and we might have to give up picks this year in order to make this move up happen. If he's available at that Browns pick at number six, I am going to try and move up the nine spots in order to get him. Really, not too much of a, a huge move there, but still significant enough where it is going to cost a little bit. And the Browns are on the clock at number six. He is still available. We're going to make a phone call. It says we need a center, but I'm fine with John Michael Schmitz. So our next highest need is corner. And I really couldn't agree more with that. Let's try to make a move up. We have two... No, we, why did I see two thirds? We have one third round pick. We have basically our whole draft class except for sixth. I would give you, what about a three next year? Gonna take a little bit more than that. How about a four this year, a three next year, and also a four next year to get number six. It's so close. I just really don't want to give up number 79. So a four, a five, and a three. You move up to number six. That's even worse. Do I have to add the four next year as well? The big package of picks. But we are moving up to number six in the draft. Browns move down to 15. Not really a huge uh, fall there. But we are moving up for our guy. Looks to be one of the better cornerback prospects I've seen is only 5'10 and 23 years old, but A catching, A man, A press, A zone, elite speed, great agility and change of direction, only good acceleration, but besides F injury, everything here looks phenomenal. D play rec, whatever. Jamal Mitchell, welcome to the Giants. 95 speed, 91 acceleration and agility, 94 change of direction, go with 88 jumping. That is an immediate starting CB2. He looks very good. I wish acceleration was a bit higher, but he's going to be a phenomenal defensive back and maybe even the best player in the entire draft as we move down to the second round. Not going to be trading up. I'd like for one of these corners to remain available that looks good. We could definitely consider that here. Yeah, a couple round one to two talents, especially if you have B zone coverage. I would definitely consider moving one of these guys back to safety, especially if you're 6'4", 207 pounds. Very good speed. For safety, a hit power, but of course for a cornerback. What about Felix Carradine? A little bit faster, only B hit power, C tackle. What is the tackle 
for Brendan or Brandon Chambers because he's the current leader in the clubhouse here. His tackle is a C. Not amazing. Okay, but that's here at the top of the list. Could go with receiver. I'm likely not going to be able to get everybody that I want here. Marius Baxter looks very good. Run stopper, elite speed. He'd be obviously a good fit at defensive end for us. I wish I knew what his power boost was. Then I, uh, there's a, a first round corner, true talent. This is very tough. He has great speed, elite acceleration, elite agility, B hit power, B tackle. He could also play safety very comfortably. Oh man. Is this a trade down spot? I feel like if we trade down, we're going to miss out. Larry Bibbs looks pretty good. Hybrid A man coverage. Pretty good speed. We definitely have a really tough decision to make. This linebacker looks pretty good. Terrell Andrews from Florida. Not really going to be something I'd consider, but he has elite speed, elite agility. A man. Block shed, C tackle. If tackle and block shed were better, that actually might end up being the pick. I mean, trading down, we're not going to be able to get as much as I want. Are the D tackles still available that look good? Dominic Rucker. Jamison Wayne. Did I look at anybody else? Nick Tomlinson, maybe. Surely not. Horrendous. I like the idea of really any of these corners. And this receiver out of Alabama, Vince Kilgore, looks pretty good too. Only decent speed, poor acceleration is going to take him out of the running for me. But he looks very solid. You can definitely get around that. This is a very tough decision. I mean, Richard St. Clair looks good, too. Does anyone have two mid to late second round picks or an early third that you'd give me? Because I could consider moving down slightly to pick up one of those, if possible. Okay, going to try a little bit of a pick swap here with the Bears. I'm trading my second and third for their second and third. So, we had previously 47 and 76 or something like that. And now we have... 56 and 65. I think that's going to put us in a better position to get the players we want. However, we might miss out on one of the players in the process. Vince Kilgore, I'm fine with that. There goes Demarius Baxter. Would have been an interesting decision there if he got to round two, pick 24. The corners are staying on the board though. Unless all of them go right in a row here, we're going to get, be able to get one that we want. And I think we might still have our choice. We're still going to have our choice, and we still have the first pick in the third round. Okay, things worked out really well. However, I mean, the answer about who we take gets no easier, in my opinion, because Carradine and Chambers both look like they can move back to safety. Round one to two talents. Johnny Garner looks like he could also do that and is a true round one talent. I wish we could get both. I'm going to take Johnny Garner. He is the best athlete of everybody and looks like he could make that transition pretty easily 93 speed 94 acceleration 92 agility 90 change of direction phenomenal athlete does the other corner get to us i hope so because i'd like to draft him brandon right please get to me that would make this a lot easier we're getting close the corners are staying on the board there goes the tight end. We're so close to our next pick. There goes the safety. The Chiefs take a safety. Larry Bibbs, the 49ers, could take a corner. And they go with a defensive tackle. So this is going to work out really well for us because we get both of the players I want. Instead of Felix Carradine, I'm going with Brandon Chambers. 6'4", 207, 21 years old. Very solid athlete overall with A hit power, B block shed, C tackle, B zone, B awareness, B man. Very well-rounded player. Only normal development. That's fine when you're 21 years old. Looks to be a very solid athlete, but the good thing we took the other player ahead of him with Hidden Dev and probably higher upside. So we're going to miss out on defensive tackle down the board here because we really went to upgrade our secondary. You can do that when you sign BJ Hill and Jaron Reed in free agency. Gives us a little bit more leeway. We really upgraded the secondary, which was obviously a priority. Three picks in the secondary. Of course, two of those I expect to you know, be in contention to play safety for us and start at safety for us. I, I think that went pretty well. Going to take a shot at a defensive tackle here. Nathan Gardner, 6'2", 287, undersized. 
Decent enough athlete. B finesse moves, B tackle. I think is why I would take him. He is going to move to defensive end. He's going to be pretty bad, probably. But it's depth on the D-line, which we need. Draft recap. 81 overall corner in Jamal Mitchell. Worth the trade-up. 82 man, 81 zone, 77 press. He's going to obviously stick at corner. We didn't draft him to play safety. That's a corner. Johnny Garner is a 76 overall through round one talent. 71 man, 76 zone. 63 tackles, 68 hit power, 51 block shed. He could definitely start at free safety over Kalen King. We still have Jason Pinnock. And we can develop the other corner that we're expecting to move back to safety at strong safety. 6'4", 207. Better man than zone. Press is okay. Tackle's not so great. Hit power is good. Block shedding could be better. Do we keep him at corner? Maybe. Got a good running back down the board. 68 overall. The D-tackle was horrendous at a 61. Again, I'm moving him to defensive end, but still bad. And wow. Generational quarterback headed to the Broncos. 83 overall with 9... <laughs> okay. 98 speed, 97 acceleration, 96 agility, 94 change of direction, 94 throw power, 90 throw on the run. Unreal. Like the Lamar Jackson, Michael Vick build. This is insane. And the Broncos may have finally found their guy at QB. Unbelievable. 83 overall. Jamal Mitchell was two. Dante Wright for three. And then look, I told you the cornerbacks were sweet. Cornerbacks were very good in this class. And this was a stacked draft class. Artie Lloyd ends up being a 77 overall. He looked good. But we were really never in position to get him. Johnny Garner up there at the top. All these corners. It's unreal. Demarius Baxter ended up only being a 72. So maybe a good thing we weren't in position because I would have considered it. Yeah, power moves just not quite high enough. Not quite a good enough athlete. Hidden Dev makes that look a little bit better. But only normal, of course. I want to see that linebacker. Looked at him. Looked pretty good was very fast. Terrell Andrews ends up being a 71. Ooh, only normal dev. Still looks pretty good. Block shed, just low, but looks pretty good. I think with Jerry and Jones, we can definitely afford to move Brandon Chambers back to strong safety. Got the size for it. It's 6'4", 207. Chambers moves down to a 73 overall. Garner, I have high expectations for. Halen King can be a backup. We have good depth now at safety. Linebacker looks pretty good. The D-line obviously has improved. It's still not great. But this is a much better looking team with upgrades all over the secondary. Offense obviously remains unchanged. But I'm hoping we get better production out of the Drake Mays in 83 overall. I definitely am expecting the team to be more competitive this year. But we'll see how they actually look. Receiver obviously is a need. We have Adonai Mitchell, which is awesome. Need somebody else to take a step up. The focus of this offseason was defense. Really just trying to solidify things. And I think that's okay. But... I'd love for one of these receivers to take a big step. Hopefully that ends up happening. Brandon Chambers as sub-linebacker three. Kind of that, like, money-backer type role. But the defense, I mean, I think it's paid off. The defense looks way better. Just receiver. Is O-line still a big need? It's still a need. John Michael Schmitz is only a 70. But offensive linemen and Madden just don't get developed. It's insane. They're just bad forever. You draft them at 70 overall, they're going to be a 71 overall in 10 years. All right, that's quite an improvement. Six and one at the midseason mark. Atop the NFC East by a wide margin. Offense, number two in points per game. Thank you, Chiefs Playbook. Number eight defense in points per game. We are on top of the world right now. Look at this quick turnaround. Gotta love it. We will be extending Kayvon Thibodeau. And as I mentioned, because we waited and didn't hit him with a fifth-year option, it's going to be less expensive than it, it would have been a year after this. So this was a very good decision. Kayvon Thibodeau is back. $21 million in 2026 cap room. How expensive is Evan Neal? Really not too bad. I can, I can pay about $5 million per year for a potential starting tackle for three years. Wandale, I'd like to bring back. He's a little bit expensive. If I stretch it out, it won't be so bad. He wants a little bit more money. I really didn't even want to offer that in the first place. 
Micah McFadden. I could do a four-year deal. Let's offer that. He wants more money. He wants to be in Florida. Well, for a guy that committed to Indiana. Thing. I'm not going to make any type of big trade for a receiver here. I'm not going to overreact to early success. Kind of like the Giants in the first year of the Joe Shane era, right? And year two wasn't so great. But that's okay. That's okay. We're going to simulate to the playoffs. And currently, I expect this to be a playoff team. Scouting national focus, the strengths of the draft class. Wide receiver. Yes. Left end, right tackle. All things we could consider again. But when your team isn't all that great, you can consider drafting a lot of things. Simulates the playoffs here. This would have to be some type of extraordinary collapse to miss the playoffs here. Even if we only win four games the rest of the season, I mean, I think we're in with 10 wins. And we would certainly do more than just make the playoffs. First round by 14 and 3. What a season. What a season. So this is kind of a quick turnaround here. Lost to the Vikings in week four. Lost to the Lions in week 10. Lost to the Cowboys in week 17. You know what I'm finding out? We're just not good um, against bad teams. No, I mean, the Cowboys obviously simulate really, really well. The Lions, you know, they're obviously on the rise. And the Vikings, I don't know. Just it's the old school NFL teams that are giving us trouble. Those teams have been around forever. And, uh, you know, they're they're showing us. But so are the Giants. I don't know. I don't know what I'm rambling about. 4,400 passing yards for Drake May. 30 touchdowns to 9 interceptions. Rushing Devin Singletary turned in 20 touchdowns. Unreal. 1,200 yards, 4.2 per carry. Receiving Jalen Hyatt, 1,000 yards. Darren Waller back over 1,000 yards, 13 TDs. Adonai Mitchell had a productive year, but didn't find the end zone. Or only found the end zone three times. Wondell Robinson didn't find the end zone. Okay, I'd like Adonai Mitchell probably to be wide receiver one. Bobby Okereke posting very similar numbers. Sack production starting to go up for the team. 14 sacks for Lawrence. 9.5 for Brian Burns. 8 for Kayvon Thibodeau. Interceptions are up across the board, I would say. But I'm more concerned about winning than I am individual production. I want to make a winner. I want to make a team that's going to be awesome. And Johnny Garner not having the abilities tab means just star development, unfortunately. I'm going to continue to upgrade zone, but the CPU will do that. I'll do hybrid here. He moves up to an 81 overall temporarily. Plus three to tackle is very nice. Zone moves up to an 80. Wandale Robinson's going to move up close to an 80. Let's do let's do deep threat for Wandale. He's going to temporarily be boosted up to an 80 overall. What is the overall for the corner, I wonder? I think, is he the only other hidden dev player we got? We didn't really have too many draft picks. So, yes, I think so. What is your dev trait? Superstar. We'll take superstar. Can't be mad about that. And we will meet the Cowboys in the division round of the playoffs. This time, though, home field advantage. Gotta love that. And I'll tell you, the Giants have experienced a whole lot more playoff success in the 21st century than the Cowboys have. So we may, in fact, have the advantage here. Cowboys did beat us in the regular season and do so here in the playoffs. All right. First round exit. Devastating news. Got an old school matchup here, 90s. Cowboys, Bills, Super Bowl. See what ends up happening with those two teams. I would expect the Cowboys win here just because they're so good in simulation. The Bills can be. And they Bills, the Bills did come through. 38-28. Patrick Mahomes wins NFL MVP. And the Bills finally can add a Super Bowl trophy to the uh, Lombardi trophy to the Super Bowl trophy case. What am I saying? They 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 lost four times in a row. They finally get on the board. <laughs> Hats off to them. Devin Singletary gets a slight boost up here to an 83 overall, playing up to an 86. And he has superstar dev. Something about the 20 touchdowns could have been a contributing factor there. Okay. Not too bad. And we'll go to re-sign players. Is it really just Wandale Robinson? I think it might be. And now we should be able to cut Daniel Jones, freeing up a ton of cap space, giving us a lot more flexibility. I need Jalen Waddle to be a free agent and all my dreams will be realized. Please. All right. Daniel Jones, still a massive penalty 
associated with cutting him. Do we just let it go at this point? We still would free up some money, but again, the penalty would be pretty significant. So I'm, I'm really, I'm weighing it out. Deontay Banks, we will pick up the fifth year option on. Wandale Robinson, Micah McFadden got up to star dev. I'll give him a little bit more money to stick around. Four year deal, Micah McFadden's back. And then I'm just gonna let Wandale go. He doesn't wanna be here. I don't wanna pay him upwards of 5 million per year. If we really want to bring him back, we can bring him back in free agency. But I think really everybody here we can let test, which means we're going to let go of them probably. Including Jermaine Illuminor. I would say that I mean, Baron Reed's down to a 71. Things do matter, and there's not really significant interest from these guys in returning. So... We're going to let them test the open market, see what they can bring back. And not going to close the door on anything, but it's unlikely that many of those players will return. Micah Parsons here in free agency. Not really a great fit for us, but obviously a great player. Not really a great fit for us right now. Travis Kelsey. All right, no superstar receiver, unfortunately. So that kind of stinks. We could bring in Jahan Dotson. That could be a good, pretty good value pickup. We'll give Jahan Dotson a three-year contract offer. And we're currently the only team really even going after him. Beaver market kind of stale right now. I wonder if that's because of the talent in the draft. I would guess they're probably not tied together. Cade Otten could be an interesting pickup. Let's offer Cade Otten a contract. I don't really want to give him that much, though. How about a two-year deal where we can pretty much get out of that pretty quickly? Offensive line, we know... Probably just going to sit with what we have, I would say. Could bring Leonard Williams back. That'd be a pretty good pretty good deal. Two years, about $12 million. Should have motivation to return. That's awesome. Brady Jarrett could be another interesting option. I'd do maybe one year for, for super cheap if we can afford it, which we might not even be able to. I'll offer it just in case. Uh, Grady Jarrett, by the way, fun fact, is the son of... A former Falcons linebacker, Jesse Tuggle. Kind of a fun fact if you didn't know that. Jesse Tuggle was a beast a little bit before my time. Jarrett still mulling over offers, but we do bring in Leonard Williams, Jahan Dotson, and Kate Otten. Not long term contracts. Three years for Dotson's the longest of the bunch, but upgrades really for us everywhere. Uh, Kate Otten probably still under Darren Waller, but Waller. Could be potentially cut by me. Brady Jarrett going to head to Washington. Not sure yet. Micah Parsons headed to Seattle. Joe Tooney back to the Patriots. Or Matthew back to the Saints. Brady Jarrett still not sure. And he's headed to the inter or division rival Washington Commanders, I would say more than likely. But I think we pretty good free agency. Going into the draft, still going to think about receiver. Break May is up to superstar X Factor. Darren Waller is superstar, but only a 75 overall at this point. So Kate Otten actually is an upgrade. O line, I'm still fine there, I think. Don't really know where we'd go. And then defensively, Brian Burns, superstar X Factor. Love to see that. Yeah, team's really not looking too bad. D line, safety, maybe, wide receiver. Corner, maybe, but our needs are, I mean, wide receiver is not even that huge of a need. O-line, I just don't know if it'd be worth the upgrade. Tough to draft really high overall offensive linemen. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, we traded a couple of picks this year, so we're a little bit more limited. I really wouldn't expect any type of a trade-up. I'm not going to say it's completely off the table, because, you know, if it makes sense, it makes sense. But, you know, it's it's not something I'm planning on. There would have to be some type of, like, real generational receiver in this draft, which I guess there could be. But it's not something I'm really heavily considering. NFL draft time! We're going to be picking, what, mid to late 20s? Mm, that stinks. All right, well, Saints at number one. We're going to simulate straight to 27. Adonis Coleman is a strong receiver name. 
Let's see what's available for us at the back end of the first round here. So there's running back. Maybe he can play receiver. He's receiving back. A catching. Wow. Probably will go a different way. Let's see here. Again, with a similar type of build at defensive end. Not athletic enough. He's going to be like below 70s overall run stopping defensive end. Need to be a little bit better than that. Although I'm just not really blown away by what's here. Theo Gandy's an interesting run stopping linebacker. Maybe this is a pick we trade for a player. We could definitely consider trading a first round pick for maybe a receiver with an expiring contract. What about Javier Alexander? He looks pretty good. Maybe that that's going to be our third receiver. Okay. Is he going to make it to my next pick? We can definitely trade up. Not going to cost a ton. We do have a second round pick. We could just also trade back. Trading back is probably the right move. Let's do that. Okay. Number 27 and a sixth is going to get us number 39 and a second round pick next year from the Bears. I think that's a pretty fair trade all the way around. We move back, you know, a bunch of spots, round two, pick seven. However, we should still be able to land a pretty good player, and we get a second round pick next year from a team that hopefully isn't very good. I mean, this corner looks quite good. We just really don't need more corners at this point. I think our secondary is kind of locked down. Let's go with Javier Alexander here. 5'11", 182, 21 years old out of Ole Miss. Very good athlete. Very good looking skills. Medium route running is bad. Short route running is not much better. Everything else looks very good. And he's only got normal development. But could certainly be an impact player right away. Get the star dev. Offensive rookie of the year type thing. Normal dev is just a little bit disappointing, obviously. But he looked good. And then at defensive tackle, I'm not really sure we can go wrong here. We have all like the similar type of they're definitely actually 3-4 defensive ends for us, which is totally fine. Elite speed and acceleration for Trayvon Gilchrist. He looks very good. Nigel McKenzie is going to be probably very similar. He also looks very good. I'm, I'm assuming Finesse Moves is an A. Maybe that's a, not a safe assumption. I might opt to go somebody else for that reason, but... All these guys look very good. They're basically identical. We have to make sure we get the, the best one here. Also elite speed. I think I just go with the top guy. I think we go with Trayvon Gilchrist. 6'5", 291, 21 years old. Elite speed and acceleration. He should be awesome. Looks very good. Welcome to the Giants. Does have 81 speed and 86 acceleration. But unfortunately, also only normal development. Can I trade Darren Waller? Does Darren Waller get interest from anybody? No interest in Darren Waller. He's definitely somebody I could consider cutting. I wanted to move up here for another one of those D tackles. I just don't think it's going to happen. Draft recap. Javier Alexander is 75. Raylan Gilchrist is really only a 69. I expected something in the low 70s for sure. I got duped on that one. He looked he looked actually very solid. 83 overall running back in this class. Went at number four overall. Really good safety. Really good quarterback. Man, what was the best thing we really could have drafted? Not really that good of a draft class. And, you know, the top players were kind of sprinkled all over. Javier Alexander ends up being one of the better players in the class. True round one talent. But just not a very good draft class. 77 finesse moves for Gilchrist, though. I mean, he really doesn't look as bad as a 69 overall says. Maybe he goes up here at right end. Got him wearing the number 99. Nope, stays the same. Is Darren Waller worth keeping right now? He did have a big 2025, but we can do that for Kate Otten. 17 and a half million for his final year. I think we'll hold on to him because we don't need to release him. But if for any reason we need any cap space... Maybe mid-season trade deadline. Trying to make a move. We could do it. Also, I'm learning the tight end that we drafted. Jamar Wilson. I say we. The CPU. Drafted a hidden development tight end. Doesn't look particularly good. 
but does have every trait you could ask for. I just wish that in a, in a rebuild, you could develop a player like this. It would just really take four years for him to be anything serviceable at all, which I'm not saying is unrealistic. It's just, you know, it's tough for our purposes to develop him into anything. Really got to be focused week by week training, in my opinion. Plus, on top of that, you also, you know, should probably use them in the game. Get them reps. And we just really can't do that, unfortunately. So, it is what it is. But we also don't have the time for that. I can't do, you know, four more seasons for this Giants rebuild as much as I would like to. You know, I love... It just... It feels more personal when I'm doing my favorite team, obviously. I wish Chambers would have got an upgrade to star dev. Nobody got any type of dev trade upgrade in training camp, unfortunately. Now, these guys are getting better, and Brandon Chambers really could earn the starting job right now over Jason Pinnock, and I think I'm going to do it. It's a one overall point difference. Pinnock, of course, playing up to a 78. Chambers is significantly younger. I think it's 21 years old, or 22 now, of course, because he's going into year two, versus 27. He's ready to start. He's ready. He's going to develop at a faster rate. Makes sense to do it. Now, I can't in good conscience start Darren Waller at fullback, so Wilson is going to be the one. And uh, we'll see what this season looks like for us. I'm expecting big things. We had a great season last year, but try to be even better this year. It is kind of funny to see Leonard Williams back and BJ Hill back. I'm bringing back a lot of former Giants, huh? It went so well for them first time with these guys, but defense looks pretty good. Brian Burns is now a 90 overall. We got edge threat on him. I'm hoping for a big time breakout year. And then offensively, Still really missing that bona fide wide receiver one. Do we trade for one? Do we upgrade on the O-line? It's tough to do that. It's tough to do that. Now, where's our pick projected to be? Could we potentially trade for somebody on an expiring contract? End of the first round. Depending on how we're doing at week eight, we could make a mid-season trade acquisition at the deadline there. And... Right now, we're going to keep the, the team as is, but it, that'll be in our back pocket. Well, certainly not as good as we were last year, but four and three. Cowboys and Eagles, both six and one. Close loss to the Commanders in week seven's tough. Big difference between four and three and five and two, with the Commanders being at one and five. They're not going to be really be in contention for the division, but do we try and go out and make a trade? What's our problem right now? Number nine offense, number seven defense in points per game. Rushing attack's not great, but we're throwing the ball so well. Do we go out and get a receiver? I'm going to look at guys with expiring contracts. Drake May's playing really well. Adonai Mitchell's having a big season. Only one touchdown. Jalen Hyatt, I'd like... I mean, I wanted to develop him. I guess we still could. It's just tough with the normal development. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look around, see what we can do. You know, the big trade happened while I was recording this video. A lot has happened since I started recording this video, by the way. The Giants signed, just from a Giants perspective, Isaiah McKenzie, right? Or, yes, Isaiah McKenzie. They signed the Green Goblin. I uh, started for the Patriots last year. And Jalen Mills. I guess he's going to play safety. Giants, that'll be interesting, but if, it wouldn't have made a huge impact in this video. Uh, Daniil Hunter to the Texans. Deontay Johnson traded from the Steelers to the Panthers for Dante Jackson. Very interesting trade. I just, people think the Steelers got fleeced. I see why you would say that, but the Steelers didn't really have a lot of leverage there. Final year of his contract. It's kind of just a swap. Dante Jackson or Deontay Johnson. The Panthers needed a receiver. The Steelers needed a corner. I know it's not ideal. It's not like Dante Jackson is some awesome player. And Deontay Johnson, you know, is 
is not a superstar player, but he's really good. He's a solid route runner. A, a more than solid route runner. Phenomenal route runner. But um, he's not some superstar type player. I hope he you know, is in Carolina because it'd be really fun to watch with Bryce Young hopefully developing. But yeah, I don't actually think it's a huge fleece just because of the, the current Deontay Johnson contract. He's a very good player though. So I just think it's, I think I'd lean more towards it being a win-win just because they both got what they needed and the Steelers can kind of start to move on. But yeah, we'll see. Anyway, speaking of receivers, I'm looking for somebody with like one year remaining. Give me a rental. Should be cheapish to acquire. 79 overall Cooper Cup does not fit the bill. Devontae Adams could be interesting. Can't afford him right now, but we could we could make it happen if we we move some money around, which is very possible. Daniel Jones, Darren Waller. We could make it happen. Okay, we're gonna start by cutting Darren Waller. We just save too much money by doing it. That's gotta be the first thing. Daniel Jones, thank you, but no thank you. It's time to let him go. We free 11 million. The penalty of 47 and a half is just so brutal. It, it really shouldn't be like anything at this point. You know what? The actual penalty, aka dead cap at this point in 2026, it's 11 mil. Not 47 and a half million. It's 11 mil in dead cap. And I know that says the, the savings is 11 mil, um, but it's coincidentally also. 11.1 in dead cap i can promise you you save way more money because the penalty is not 47 and a half in real life it just isn't it's not even that in 2025 but we are going to release daniel jones that penalty is going to take effect next year a first and a second round pick doesn't get me half a season to Devonte adams which means i'm just probably not going to make that trade it is what it is we're gonna go out in free agency and look for a darren waller and daniel jones replacement could use a backup quarterback you know there are a number of different options in here including daniel jones just feels a little bit weird to release him and then re-sign him we're gonna opt for kirk cousins instead and you can bet all of that 2.15 million that we just signed him to fully guaranteed Kirk will appreciate that. He's the fully guaranteed king. Also, Tucker Craft is in here. Easy signing. Love Tucker Craft. In terms of players that are going to be free agents, no one really wants to be here, which is a little bit concerning. Devin Singletary doesn't want to be a giant, even though he signed with the Giants in real life. I could get behind that, I guess. Bobby Okereke wants to be in a warm weather state, even though... He signed with the Giants. Okay, interesting. <laughs> John Michael Schmitz I could get. He just wants to win. He's on the fence right now. I don't know that we can really re-sign anybody except for Tucker Craft. He got signed off the streets. He's like, hell yeah, dude. Please, I'll, I'll do anything to be back. Jalen Hyatt will try to extend. He's back pretty easy. But Singletary and Bobby Okereke could be different stories. And I don't want to trade either of those guys. I think we're just going to stay where we are for right now. Singletary is a tough resign because... No, I'm going to try to get Okereke back. Singletary is a tough resign because he's a running back who's 28. Okereke is at least you know, a more valuable position for me. Like linebacker. Yes, linebackers become a little undervalued. I still think they're pretty important to a defense, especially, you know, the QB of the defense who wears the green dot, who relays the calls. You know, in the same way, they say quarterback of the defense. It's really like center of the defense because the center is picking up a lot of different looks. Yeah, quarterback too, right? But, and the quarterback wears the green dot. But I wouldn't say the linebacker is more like a quarterback than a center. That makes sense. So, yeah, I, there's so many things that they have to recognize. And especially as a linebacker, you're reading your keys, which is, you know, a number of things that you look for. If you're a linebacker, for example, you're watching the O-line, you're watching the running back, uh, quarterback, even two at times, you're looking for play action versus, okay, this is actually going to be a run or pass. You got to diagnose things quickly. Linebacker is an incredibly tough position to play. Anyway, 
We just beat the Cardinals 24 zip in week 18. 12 and 5 made the playoffs. Offense took a bit of a step back, but the defense was very good overall. And statistically, Drake May finishes with 4,400 yards, 32 touchdowns to just five picks, rushing Singletary at 3.8 yards per carry, but did find the end zone 16 times. Puts me in a bit of a tough position. I don't really know what to do about him. Getting a lot of touches and not a lot of production, or at least on a rate basis. Adonai Mitchell was insane. 111 catches for 14, nearly 1,500 yards. Only six touchdowns, but a great overall season. 87 yards per game. Jahan Dotson was good. Kate Otten was great. Jalen Hyatt scored nine touchdowns. He was great. Only 10 yards per carry or per catch for one of the biggest deep threats that you're ever going to find. Dexter Lawrence, and that's a bit of a stretch for Jalen Hyatt, but that's his whole game, by the way, is catching the ball downfield. So, kind of what I mean there. Not that he's the best deep threat of all time. Dexter Lawrence, 21 TFLs. Nine and a half sacks. Look at this production. 11 and a half for Thibodeau. True breakout season. 10 and a half or 10 and a half for Brian Burns. I know Thibodeau is right there in real life in 2023. Somewhat of an inflated number if you behind the hood a little bit. But I'm hoping with Brian Burns, he enjoys a real true breakout. And maybe that's what this is. Brian Burns, double digit sacks. Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams right behind. Kind of fun. Bring Leonard Williams back. Huge contract for him in real life. Giants traded him for a second, which kind of turned into Brian Burns. It's not the same thing, but it enabled the Giants to make that trade and still keep a second round pick. Plenty of interceptions for everybody as well. Let's make a playoff run. Who are we facing in round one? It's the Carolina Panthers. Oh, what a fun matchup. What a fun matchup. The team that traded Brian Burns now needs to face him in the playoffs. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is despite winning more games than the Panthers, because they seem to have won their division, and we didn't, the Panthers get home field advantage in the playoffs. We are a better team, and that is some BS. But that's all right. We ride. We rise above it. And I'm just going to simulate, hopefully, don't lose to the Panthers in the wild card. 42-24, a resounding win. I might actually jump in for the divisional. I'd like to win in 2026. I could run it back, but I sure would like to win now. 87 overall team. We've done it the right way. For the most part. Like a Parsons. Yawk. Okay. Yo, know, I mean, Evan Neal could have his hands full on this one. Home field advantage this time. Bet Life Stadium. East Rutherford, New Jersey. Let's see if we can get it done. And it was not actually a great start. We were down 14-0. Brought it back somewhat here, but cannot seem to find a way to stop Seattle. And they keep scoring. And our offense cannot find the end zone. Jaden Daniels is the Seahawks quarterback. And ooh, we got the football back somehow. Nine-yard loss. No, we didn't, but they get a field goal. Two and a half minutes to play. Oh, man. We just didn't bring it this game. Our offense was kind of bad. Only 14 points. And the defense allowed 31 points. Definitely really bad. That's picked. Game over. Throw out a sack. Interception. It was just going to be too much regardless. It's Darnell Savage. Down 31-14 with two and a half minutes. It's just, it's just not enough, man. What a trash performance, man. I mean, Jaden Daniels completely outplays... Drake May and maybe that's revenge for not drafting we had the choice Drake May launches two interceptions very disappointing result I mean in terms of QB rating Drake May was half as good as Jaden Daniels tough game for sure but you know, our offense was terrible defense didn't do much to help us out either Bills beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl 38-35 Lamar Jackson wins league MVP no Giants anywhere to be found. This is going into the last season now. We've experienced some moderate playoff success. Moderate is really all I can say. It hasn't been very much. Been a little bit disappointing so far. We're obviously a team that contend, that can contend. 12 and 5 after a 14 win season the year before. We are quite obviously one of the best teams in the league now. 
just have not been able to find that playoff success. 96 million in cap room. Of course, we'll pick up the fifth-year option on Drake May. That affects nothing for right now, really. And then Okereke declined our last offer. I still want Bobby Okereke. So just say yes. And he returns. Devin Singletary, we're going to let walk. John Michael Schmitz, it's not like he's super young at this point. He's 28 years old. It's not like he was a particularly young rookie. He's got to play better fast. He's only a 74 overall. We're going to let JMS walk. Tucker Craft, fine. We could use a, another tight end, whatever. Don't, I mean, John Runyon's here. John Runyon Jr. we can bring back. Two years, 10 million. Just slightly shorter, but basically the same deal that he actually signed in real life. Eric Gray, we don't necessarily need. Okay, well, 68 million in free agency. We need help on the O-line. And it, maybe it still is John Michael Schmitz, okay? Maybe it still is. And our defensive line needs to be boosted as well. Kayvon Thibodeau up to superstar dev. Love to see that. We need, ideally, a big-time defensive lineman. I do like our secondary. O-line, big-time receiver, running back. We have some needs. Tyree Kill is here. Well, that fills one of those needs, at least. I'm offering Tyree Kill a two-year deal. He wants three. Do I just give him three? I mean, he's 33 at this point, but I'm sure he's not lost a step. And if he's the thing that takes us over the top, I accidentally withdrew it trying to look at him. Why Why is Y view player card unless you've already made an offer? Makes no sense to me. He's still unbelievable, though. That's the review. Ronnie Stanley would probably sign a one-year contract. Is it worth it over Evan Neal? We can offer him. And we're significantly the best offer. Let's actually take it down. All right. Tyree Kill, Ronnie Stanley, and Tevin Jenkins are going to be the group that I offer. I think Tevin Jenkins gives us a flexibility to potentially move maybe Wyatt Teller to center. I'm trying to get the best five on the O-line. And I, I don't really want to move Tevin Jenkins to center. I'd, I'd probably prefer, maybe even, maybe even Runyon can do it. But Tevin Jenkins just seems like the best available offensive lineman. And he's very interested in joining. I'm just trying to put the best five out there. Ronnie Stanley at right tackle if he decides to sign. No telling that these guys will sign. But we're just trying to get the best pieces we can. They're short-term deals. No real lock-in except Tyree Kill is three years. And we got all of them. We're just trying to put the best five out on the field. Offense. We couldn't score points in the playoffs. That should not be a problem this season. We're going to pass on running back here in free agency. We just don't really have a ton of money left for free agents at this point. We really, you know, went into the offensive line boat. And I think it was a good decision. Just if we wanted Devin Singletary back, that was an option. I don't know what the difference between him and a 77 overall running back is, honestly, at this point. And I know that seems wild, but unless you're a 90 overall running back in this game, typically your performance isn't anything spectacular. So it's just not worth it to pay that type of a player. It's kind of funny because kind of the way it seems to be in real life with team philosophies on paying running backs except Josh Jacobs got paid this year Saquon Barkley got paid obviously so I don't know it depends if you're a certain caliber if the money's available if the team's good enough there are exceptions but in the draft running back is something we could definitely consider you could also consider interior defensive line and I, I like our offense getting Tyreek Hill is a game changer we're not going to be picking especially high. Definitely seem to be some good players available, but defensive line, 6'3", 272 could actually fit the bill. Do we have the ammo to move up? Maybe, maybe not, but we'll consider it if he falls. Isaiah Monroe looks like the best available running back we could grab. He's a day three player. He's probably not actually great. Just a short yardage power back. We might actually be trading for a running back, which not something I was expecting to do, but hopefully the value is not tremendous on a player like that. I'd like to not give up a first round pick. 
if Christian McCaffrey is not worth a first round pick, surely anybody else isn't. Well, Zach Cook, who I was looking into potentially targeting, is likely to be the number one overall pick. So, that highly unlikely to happen now. Mitch Nixon I liked. Looks like it's going to be a heck of a way to move up to number 10. Not impossible. Leonard Bennett, I think I also looked at. Max Williams, I might have looked at. Can we pick at number 27? Question becomes, is it worth it to try and trade up for anybody? Mitch Nixon looks quite good. Is he a good athlete? He's fine. He's fine. We could certainly use an upgrade. Javier Lockridge is somebody I had higher hopes for. Looks, again, fine. But Leonard Bennett. Where's he supposed to go? He looks like a very good athlete. A finesse moves, which is very interesting. Four pounds. Not exactly 3-4 defensive end size, but we can get away with it. We could get away with it. Right, let's see how this draft goes. I think the Steelers might have been a target for Bennett. We might try and move up with them if we're going to try to do anything. Because I can pretty much guarantee you the players that I'm looking at. There goes Lockridge. Players that I'm looking at are unlikely to be there at 27. So that's the exact type of scenario where you trade up. Here's the Raiders pick. That is Mitch Nixon. He's off the board. But we could certainly move up from 27 to 15. That's a possibility. So, let's see if it happens. There's Bradley Hull. All right, let's see what we can do. We do need a running back. I don't really want to trade a first-round pick in order to get one. So, and we'll see where that leaves us. We do have two second-round picks, though. That makes things a little bit more interesting. Because 27, 59, and a 5 is going to move us up in the draft. That's perfect. And then hopefully that second round pick can land us a serviceable starting running back. There just doesn't seem to be anybody in the draft. I'd like for them to be, or like I'd like for there to be, but there just doesn't seem to be. Leonard Bennett is a very good athlete. C block shed's fine enough. A finesse moves, C power moves, B tackle. Great speed, elite acceleration. He's going to have to cut it. Leonard Bennett, welcome to the team. Does have hidden dev. Should be a good pass rusher. And that's going to be extremely valuable on the interior. We're actually getting decent offers for number 36. Texas legend Jonathan Brooks. I might have to be in. Roma Dunze. Want to see if we can get a big time running back. I'd be willing to give up quite a bit to get one. I don't want Will Shipley in picks. I want an actual good running back. I'll tell ya. 30-year-old Saquon Barkley could be interesting to bring back. Never went to the Eagles in this timeline. Is this even going to be close? Eh, would take a little bit more. All right, the trade we're making is an interesting one. It is a second-round pick, number 36 overall, and a third next year for Nick Chubb. I don't know if the value on that actually is good for us. He's 31 years old. He's down to an 86 overall. I hope he can still get it done. Trading number 36 overall plus a third next year does kind of feel like a lot, but if we're really going for it this year, we're going to need a serviceable running back and 31-year-old Nick Chubb is just going to have to do. I tried to, you know, get somebody better. And hopefully he's incredibly productive for us. But it was just kind of the best option. I'm not, you know, thrilled by it, but what could we do? But draft another Barkley. Rashad Barkley. Not quite the same level of player, I would say. Steve Hatcher actually doesn't look like such a bad linebacker option. 5'11", 234. Wish he was a little bit faster. Actually, Pro Day pretty, was pretty good, but only good speed. Probably mid-80s, which isn't so bad. Solid option. Let's get Steve Hatcher in the mix. 87 speed, 88 acceleration, 87 agility. Unfortunately, only normal development. And with our fourth round pick, I think it's that running back I liked. And I don't, I can't really imagine he'll play much. I very much doubt he's some unbelievable diamond in the rough. But Isaiah Monroe, he looks good. This is why the key ratings can be deceiving. He's a power back. 
A break tackle, B carrying, A to C ball carrier vision. Athletically, he's just fine. And then the juke move and spin move are so bad that the power backs never actually are rated that high. A stiff arm, A trucking, A break tackle. Like that seems like a top pick in the draft. But the juke and spin and overall agility probably is not going to be that great. I'm hoping for a low 70. Does have hidden dev. Does have 90 agility, in fact. 90 speed, 89 acceleration. 90 agility is a bit of a surprise. It said only good. His change of direction, I think, was marginal. And the juke and spin move are going to be bad to terrible. But maybe he's a good short yardage back. Now, does that pair well with Nick Chubb? Not really. That's what kind of Nick Chubb's going to be. But he's also going to play every other snap as well, pretty much. Get 300, snap, or 300 carries this season. We could use a receiving back, a better third down player. So I think I'm going to try and get that in free agency. Overall, for negative 1.83 in salary cap right now, which is going to be easily fixable. Clear up something very easily. It's just taking on some of those new players. Leonard Williams, no. Christian Mahogany, we honestly could just cut, but he's fine. I think John Tree Hunter's going to go. We drafted his replacement. Bye-bye, John Tree. I'm sorry. Let's see the draft recap. How'd we do? Okay. 76 overall for Leonard Bennett is actually quite good for a defensive end out of the draft. 82 finesse moves. Block shedding is only a 70. That's fine. Wish he was a little bit heavier. You know, if this were actually one of my main franchises, I'd probably build up a storyline of him bulking up, adding, you know, you know, 8 to 10 pounds or something like that. And then it seems more reasonable that he could be a 3-4 defensive end. But he's going to have to play defensive end for us. Going to have to. Steve Hatcher is a 69 overall. It's basically just a younger John Tree Hunter for us. Maybe a little bit more athleticism in there. But look at Isaiah Monroe. Tennessee, 6'1", about 230, 75 overall power back, but surprisingly, 73 elusive back. Juke move is an 82. That's actually not so bad. That's what a D is. That's really not awful. Spin move is a 73, but he's a power back, but 90 agility is big for him. Does have the aggressive catch trade as well. Okay. Not awful. And we drafted another Manning. Wow, going to be a legend. Good stuff there for Brian Manning. Don't hear much about him. Hear more about Arch. This draft was not very good. 178, 277s. The handful of 76 overall players. We got one of them. Max Williams, who we looked at, was also a 76. But I actually think we ended up doing pretty well here, all things considered. I mean, and Isaiah Monroe was a first-round talent. Well, he looked like clearly the best running back option. That's why I drafted him. But I would have guessed maybe a 72. I was hoping for a 72, 73. 75 or 76 is obviously significantly better than that. As we will advance to the regular season. I need to free up some money so I can sign a receiving back. But other than that, we are fine. We have like 400 tight ends on the roster. This is why we can't afford anybody. The 500k adds up. Who can actually catch the ball out of the backfield? Alvin Kamara. Nick Chubb and Alvin Kamara, I'll tell you. If this was 2021... We might have the, the best running back duo of all time. Yeah, and we got Tyreek Hill. Oh, this is a Super Bowl team. Easy. We did get a dev trade increase for what's going to be my starting safety this year, starting strong safety, which was kind of always the plan. You know, six foot four, 207 pounds, excellent speed. That's the type of player you want to develop. And Brandon Chambers now with star development gives me something to get excited about. Good player. Needs to be better as a run support player. For sure. Gets a slight boost. He's probably going to end up being 80 overall or higher before the end of the year, which is really nice. Zone and man both at 80. So, scheme versatile. Of course, it's not going to be too much of an issue here. But, team looks about as good as it can. Of course, I need to get Drake May back in at quarterback and not Tommy Townsend. Things could probably go south if Tommy Townsend was my starting quarterback. Kalen King, by the way, somehow has superstar dev. He just got it. They're like, oh, backup safety? He, he, I think he plays nickel corner for it, actually, but 
He just has superstar depth now. The fact that Kalen King has somehow finagled his way into superstar dev is frankly unbelievable. Very interesting. But this is the team. Sub linebacker Brandon Chambers is an interesting fit for that. I think I would prefer, oh, I don't know, a linebacker. I guess Pinnock can be fine. You know what? We're going to keep it as is. Get Jason Pinnock on the field, a strong safety. Going to go very defend the pass oriented. The team's great. We just need to play like it. Mid-season mark, we are 4-2, and two, which doesn't sound amazing. It's good, but the Commanders 4-3. and three. Eagles look to be 3-3. Three and three. The Cowboys have one win. Did I see that right? Kayvon Thibodeau on the verge of a breakout as well. Is he going to get to Superstar X Factor? I highly doubt it, but it could happen. How are the Cowboys 1-6? They always seem to simulate well. I guess it does happen on occasion that they don't, but... Seems bizarre. Not really going to worry about extensions right now. More worried about, you know, this team's success. Kalen King playing a lot of slot corner for us. I'd like to see his zone coverage go up. Still, a free safety. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. He's our backup free safety. Starting slot corner. Superstar dev. I just, I... Still can hardly even believe that. Leonard Bennett, who we traded up for, is up to a 78 overall. He's a really good player. We're about to find out his dev trait maybe as early as next week. Do we make any type of addition at the trade deadline? I honestly feel like our team is in a fantastic spot that I don't really need to go out and make any type of a change. I wish certain things happened differently. I wish Deontay Banks developed more than just an 84 overall. He didn't. I wish we had a, a better second inside linebacker, but we don't. But I don't really think it's worth trading for. And our interior defensive line never really got a lot better. I think Leonard Bennett could be that guy that, you know, quickly rises into the 80s, maybe even the 90s. I think there's potential for that, but we're not going to see it here in this rebuild. But uh, overall, I, I think we did a decent job, you know, we're a little bit, our, our hands are tied a little bit more in these realistic rebuilds with what we can do. Avon Thibodeau did not have the breakout game that we were looking for. Obviously, it's the NFL. Crazy things happen, right? It's not, we're not just going to be completely, we're not allowed to trade up. We're not allowed to sign any free agents. We're not allowed to trade any players. We're not allowed to trade for any players. That sounds boring, but I think, you know, we're trying to do things within the scope of realism. I think we've done that. Five and two, this needs to be a playoff team, and this needs to be a Super Bowl team. And I might jump in to get it done once we make the playoffs, which we should. And we certainly would make the playoffs. 13 and four. Another first round by for us. Drake May had 45 touchdowns, led the NFL, 4,500 yards passing, five interceptions. What a season. Rushing, Nick Chubb, 18 touchdowns, 1,200 yards, only 4.1 yards per carry, but. Can't really complain about that. Receiving, Tyree Kill had a very good season, as did Jahan Dotson. Adonai Mitchell was an awesome number three, but that's what he was this year, was our third best receiver in terms of production. Kate Otten was fine. Hill and Dotson really stole the show. 13 touchdowns apiece defensively. Brandon Chambers had 119 tackles, six for loss, three and a half sacks, and two picks. This is like, how similar is this to the Landon Collins runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year season. Interceptions would have been higher. Tackles probably lower. But I think he probably had close to four sacks. It feels reminiscent. And he's also like the hybrid safety linebacker type anyway. Landon Collins had 125 combined tackles that year. So actually slightly more than Brandon Chambers. He had nine TFLs. He had five interceptions. And four sacks. I remember that part, right, at least. What an insane production season. He was third in defensive player of the year. I thought he was runner-up. He finished behind... Where am I seeing it here? He finished behind Von Miller, as well as Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, 11 sacks that year. 13 and a half for Von Miller. And Collins, also a touchdown. Heck of a year. Okereke, 105 tackles. 
80 for Kayvon Thibodeau is insane. Also, oh my goodness, look at the production. 17 TFLs for Dexter Lawrence, 17 for Burns, 17 for Leonard Williams, 16 for Kayvon Thibodeau, and then look at the sacks. Thibodeau, 17 and a half. 15 and a half for Lawrence, 11 and a half for Brian Burns. We were really getting after the quarterback. Jamal Mitchell with four picks. Eric K had a pair as well. Okay, this is looking like a Super Bowl caliber team. Another first round bye. We really cleaned up in the second half. And this needs to be the Super Bowl caliber team. We've really gone all in here. We need to reap the rewards. Javier Alexander, I'm kind of upset I didn't get to develop more, but if he had a different development trait than normal, maybe I'd make it happen. He's very good. Like, he looks good. Looked like he'd be a fun player to use in these. But we just needed somebody that could be better now. And, uh, of course, we went out and made that happen. Mike McFadden, slight boost to a 77 overall. Would have been nice to get him into the 80s. Kind of surprised that didn't happen. I guess he's still 27. He's good, just not exceptional here. I really wish we could have done more with him. But we'll move into the divisional. I will jump in for the divisional. I'm not risking getting flash eliminated in a simulation you're facing oh look who it is all right we're getting our revenge against seattle oh no voice almost completely left me wasn't a crack just completely left me all right well we got it back pretty quick here we go offense please show up this time here we go three nothing second quarter make it 10 nothing with the touchdown defense is showing up so is the offense at 17 nothing more points 24 nothing defense Finally allows points and a two-point conversion, but it's not going to be enough. Surely there's not enough time. And that is your ball game. 34-23 Seattle. You know, looked to make it close in the end. Wasn't really a close game. Wasn't really. We dominated most of this thing. Drake May gets his revenge. Still arguably outplayed by Jaden Daniels if you look at a completion percentage there. But basically identical numbers. Did Jaden Daniels throw a pick? He did not. And he fumbles. Not from a running back. Tucker Craft got an attempt. Are we running tight end end arounds? Jet sweeps? What's happening that Tucker Craft got an attempt? You know what? I don't even want to know. We're finishing the game. Nick Chubb averaged 3.4 yards per carry, but we're moving on. Cardinals in the NFC Championship. They're only an 82 overall. I almost don't want to waste my time, but we need to make this happen. And that's an early great start for us. 14-0. Cardinals with a field goal to start the second quarter, but this one might already be over. It's 28 to three. Surely no team in playoff history has ever come back from that. 42 to 10. And yes, I know. It, I almost don't even want to acknowledge it because then it kind of ruins it for me. But so many people don't realize when I'm clearly like, I, I, I know I say it with a straight face. So some of you don't realize that I'm not being serious. That's the joke. That's the joke. Drake May, what a game. Killed it. Kyler Murray stinks. Brandon Chambers actually playing up to an 86 overall as well. So he's really on the rise. Some huge boosts are obviously helping out considerably. But our team with morale is going to be very tough to beat in the Super Bowl. And we have made it to the Super Bowl. We might get dev trade upgrades anyway. See what we're looking like. John Dotson up to superstar development. Of course, I mean, Nick Chubb playing up to a 92 is pretty awesome. I am going to check the development trait of Isaiah Monroe. He only got 16 snaps this season. That is devastating. They got to figure out sim stats, man. That's a really, really big problem. Does have star dev, nothing crazy. Would have been cool if he was just like a secret X Factor, right? Defensively, Bobby Okereke is up to Superstar X-Factor. Kayvon Thibodeau is up to Superstar X-Factor. Brandon Chambers just got upgraded to Superstar with the simulation of Super Bowl week. And Bennett had Star all along. This is going to be a really tough team to beat. Did Kayvon Thibodeau win Defensive Player of the Year? He sure did. And Linebacker of the Year, obviously. They got to do something else. Edge Rusher versus actual off-ball linebacker because an off-ball linebacker is never going to win defense or linebacker of the year when you know you have these linebackers putting up monster sack numbers i know technically they are linebackers but we need to be able to differentiate different types of linebackers there's a huge difference between an edge rusher 
and Fred Warner. If you were going to rank linebackers, right? How are you going to rank TJ Watt and Fred Warner on the same list? They play different positions. And for those saying, well, that's inside versus outside linebacker. They're still classified as linebackers. How about, how, what about Drake Greenlaw versus TJ Watt? They're both outside linebackers who do very different things with very different responsibilities. Okay, Super Bowl time. Giants, Chiefs. The Kawika Mitchell Bowl. Darius Tony, obviously. I forget about him. Darius Tony still has one of the best games of any receiver in Giants history. And I remember. Uh, somewhat of the stat line. I think it was 10 catches for 189 yards. Maybe I'm misremembering 10, but it was 189 yards receiving against the Saints. It was like week two or four or something in New Orleans, and he was unbelievable. And that was it. It was 10 catches for 189 yards. Now, there are a number of Giants who have done better than that. The record, actually, is Del Schaffner in 1962 against... Washington had 269 yards on 11 catches. Number two is Odell, had 222 yards against the Ravens in 2016. You guys remember this guy, Gene Roberts, against the Packers in 1949, had 212 yards on seven catches, averaging 30 yards a catch. And the Plaxico Amani Toomer, Gene Roberts again. Who is this guy? Dominating the 1949 season. They didn't even pass the ball then. He had two 200-yard games. Akeem Nix, Homer Jones, Amani Toomer, and then you get to uh, Darius Tony. But Gene Roberts, Giants legend I didn't know about. I got to look into this guy. Had a four-season NFL career. And in 1949, in 12 games, started 10 of them. He led the NFL in yards from scrimmage with 1,345. Had 17 total touchdowns. He had... 634 yards rushing and nine touchdowns, as well as 711 yards receiving and eight touchdowns. I got to put some respect on Gene Roberts' name. He was an eighth round draft pick. That doesn't even exist anymore, but not relevant as we are looking to dethrone the Chiefs. And I think we've just done it. Oh, Jatavion Sanders, Texas legend. Looking to dethrone Travis Kelsey as the all-time greatest Chiefs tight end. I think he could do it. Oh, Karake, big hit. But Kadarius Tony holds on. One minute and 11 seconds away from a Super Bowl. And the end of the Chiefs dynasty. I'll call it that. It counts. He keeps feeding Kadarius Tony. Maybe that's your mistake, Patrick. Maybe that's your mistake. Here we go. Throw underneath. If they call, like, pass interference on that, that would be absolutely insane. Well, illegal contact. That's kind of what I was getting at. I didn't even know that that, that was a call in Madden. Obviously, a call in real life. We made heavy contact beyond five yards. Can't really do that. And down goes Mahomes. Sexy Dexy gets to him. Could he be Super Bowl MVP? LB scored 35 points, so it's highly unlikely. Mahomes needs a miracle. Instead, he's pressured, and he throws it away. Under pressure, and down goes Mahomes. Dexter Lawrence again. He also had some help, and the Chiefs are down to probably their final snap. Burns in the zone. Lawrence in the zone. We're sending some heat. Kayvon Thibodeau could easily end this thing as well, and he does. Actually, that might be, might, maybe was Bobby Okereke scraping over. Either way, the game is over. Let's get a snap from Drake May. Kyrie Kill on the outside, wearing that Kadarius Tony number 89. The rollout. We're actually going to use the mobility of Drake May. Take a hit! Let's air it out down the field. All right, play action. Bomb down the field. Nope. Give me time, please. That was only the second incompletion of the game for Drake May. I want the play action shot. They're actually helping on Kadarius Tony now. That's kind of annoying. Give me time, O-line. Give me time. Down the field. Oh, it's broken up by Legereus Sneed, who may not even be on the Chiefs by the time this video comes out. Give me one more shot at it. 
I wish you could put him on some type of deep crosser. Looks like Karloftis is just lining up I'm more inside here, so we should have time to get this throw off. Shot to the end zone. Tyreek Hill! Can't bring it down. Guess what? Don't care. It doesn't matter. Game over. The Giants, for the fifth time in franchise history, are Super Bowl champions. Drake May, Brian Burns, brought in Tyreek Hill in the end. We brought it. We brought back Leonard Williams. I almost brought back Saquon Barkley. Nick Chubb is now a Super Bowl champion. Jahan Dotson with the Giants. Very interesting group. And now the torch has been passed. Frank May is the new best quarterback of the modern era. Evan Neal <laughs> breaking out the phone. Uh, you didn't do shit, buddy. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. Drake May, if he goes to the Giants, is a Super Bowl champion. It's been written. It's guaranteed. Giants, best team of all time. Five-time Super Bowl champs. It's going to be six and seven, setting the record with the Giants there. So, all but guaranteed. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.